All right, we're going to go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Retro and Rare podcast episode for a Michael Monday. It's another Michael Monday. I thought you were going to spit bars. It's Jordan's birthday. Is it? Yeah, he's 57 today. So I get away with another one. I don't know how the galaxy, the universe is, is letting me get away with these, but it's working. That's two Michael Mondays in a row. I think last episode I did the freestyle thing, but it's basically the same. We're getting away with it. It's MJ's birthday. Greatest, greatest to ever do it. Greatest athlete of all time, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm excited. I'm not rocking Jordans today, though. Should have thought about that. I have some weird dad shoes on that I won't discuss. You have a Jordan hat? I should have wore that. Yeah, I'm wearing my Doom hat like always. I don't know. But anyway, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is a Michael Monday. Shout out to Michael Jordan because I know he watches the show, of course. And uh, speaking of basketball, last night, NBA All-Star Game. Did you watch it, Doyle? Uh, watch the highlights. Come on, bro. The highlights. Man, I'll be honest with you. I told, I said this last podcast or maybe the one before. When it comes to the All-Star Game, because I have nostalgic memories attached to it growing up, watching all the All-Star Games, always at my cousin's house, every year, same time. It was just something weird that lined up with my family where we were going to their house. We'd always watch it. I nerded the fuck out. This year, like, I'm telling you, Friday night, oh, celebrity game? I don't even like any of the celebrities in there. I like that Stephen A. was the coach and blah, blah. I watched every second of it. Saturday night, all the pre-show shit, everything. I was just, like, full in, glued to my TV for some odd reason, and I enjoyed it. I geeked out. It was fun. Um, Kobe Bryant shit was sad. They had a, a lot of tributes to Kobe and... You know, Magic Johnson came out before the thing, and he had everyone holding hands, and all. It was it was crazy. I mean, obviously a sad thing, but you know they celebrated. I really like so. Let's talk about the dunk contest, right? First of all, let's talk about not everyone is going to know this except for Gigantor. Gigantor and Aaron Gordon, they're identical twins. They're like brothers, bro. I have a friend who's like six fucking whatever, three hundred pounds, ripped, jacked. He looks just like Aaron Gordon. We call him Gigantor. So Gigantor, I I saw you in the dunk contest. You got robbed. Yo, I put a I put a uh, right after they put the dunk contest uh, results or whatever up on NBA on TNT's Instagram page. Um, it said something to the effect of like the NBA dunk contest had me like, and then you were supposed to write a comment, and I wrote, "It's Chicago, of course there was a robbery." Thousand likes, thousand like. I woke up the next day. I'm like, what? People were going ham. Thousand likes on that comment. Hell yeah. That's where we are in 2020. I'm hyped because I had a thousand likes on a comment. It's a sad state of affairs. Anyway, the dunk contest was good. Did you at least watch that? Uh, highlights. And you claim you're a bigger NBA fan than me. And your boy from uh, Miami won the fucking skills contest. And I think homeboy from the three-point contest, too, oh, is wow. Miami. I, I think I'm wrong on that, but I might be. Um, the all-star game itself was a really good fucking game. I like the new format. I, they were they were showing love to Kobe and Gigi with the jerseys and all that was great. And LeBron, Team LeBron, Team uh, Adetamakumpo, Giannis. I finally got his name down pat, so I say it. Um, it was cool. I liked it. I, you know, I'll I tell you what, it was competitive as fuck. Who had the better team, though, do you think? Like, who would you pick? I, I'm on LeBron. I don't give a fuck. I'm going LeBron. Yeah, just give me LeBron. You guys could have whoever else you want. That's all I care about. LeBron's LeBron to me is still head and shoulders better than everybody else because they don't have the longevity. I think LeBron is better and he's 17 years in the league. People get hyped up off Greek freak, great player. You know, all these, I know, but LeBron's 17 years in. And even if you don't think he's better, he's still in the discussion, which is stupid. It shouldn't even happen. It shouldn't even, it, it doesn't even make sense that the guy's been playing at that level for that long. And he's still in the discussion as best. The thing is, like, Michael Jordan at least took a break, you know, like the baseball shit. When, and keep, keep in mind, LeBron went from high school, you know, so the amount of miles on his body is fucking crazy. It's crazy. No, but he can still continue. No, I know that. But when you spend a million a year on fucking health and all this shit, I mean, it does do. Listen, I'm obviously not an athlete, but the last six months of my life, I've taken my health really seriously. I haven't had a fucking drop of alcohol. I've stopped eating sugar and carbohydrates in full. Bro, I feel like a million dollars. Obviously, I lost weight and all that shit, but I can only imagine 
how it affects you at an athletic level when you're working out and you're getting everything perfect. All your nutrients, you're LeBron, you're 6'8", you're 265, and you're 5% body fat. Yeah, unreal. I am losing a lot of weight, though. Look, my watches don't fit anymore. I got to go back to the jeweler, down the jeweler. I don't like that. I hate when watches are loose on me. It makes me nuts. Um, anyway, the end result of the game people thought was controversial because Anthony Davis hit the free throw yeah, to end it. Yeah, that was kind of whack, right? No, it's not whack because here's the thing. They could have changed the rule where if it's not a shooting foul, you don't go to the line. So it would deter the team from fouling. What the fuck was the point of that? You know, it's like you fouled him and he went to the line. He missed the first one, but they only needed one more point. I like that. You get up to a certain score. Because motherfuckers were playing. So, anyway, it was All-Star Weekend. I'm a nerd. I don't know how many of you guys give a fuck about it. I enjoyed it. And um, I tried catching any other sports this weekend. I was watching boxing. I was watching some of the XFL again. (laughs) Bro, that shit is crazy, bro. It's pretty good, but, I mean, you could tell it's second rate to the NFL. But while the NFL isn't on, I'm okay with it. Did you see with that one dude, that one quarterback that was going ham? Because... The XFL, they mic up their players all the time. Some of them are like the quarterback. So when they're on the sidelines, there's no reporter that has to go up to them. They can, in the middle of the game, go, hey, quarterback from the Stallions or whatever their names are. How do you feel about it? The guy was like, it's got to be the worst team I've ever played on in my life. And yo, he was like, he was like, these coaches don't know what they're doing. Can you imagine an NFL player saying that? It was crazy. You know what it reminded me of? There is a vibe to the XFL that reminds me of Mine and yours, one of our favorite guilty pleasure movies of all time. The Replacements. It reminds, there's such a vibe in the XFL, like, it's kind of outlandish, and I love it, but uh, I wouldn't bet money on it, and I wouldn't, I'm not going to get super invested into the teams, but it is something to watch when NFL is off-season. If they were on at the same time, no one's going to watch it, plus I think it's on Saturday. So, uh, XFL, golf, I was hoping Tiger Woods would go ham, he didn't. I don't know why I'm doing my Stephen A. Smith sports report today, but I am. Um, what about the Houston Astros? They're going. Yeah, the you know what? You know what, bro? I don't know how I feel about all this. I, I'm, the here, Yankees I, fans are pissed. Let me see. Well, I'm a fucking diehard. Yeah, you mean the Dodgers? No, the Yankees fans are actually more pissed than anything. Why? I don't know. Something about them facing off in the past and shit like that. Oh, I don't. Here's the thing to me. You know, I'm a proponent of steroids in sports. I think. I think athletes should be able to take steroids. First of all, people don't realize steroids taken correctly actually are fucking amazing. That's like NFL blitz. Whatever. Look, here's the thing. Here's how I feel. Remember when McGuire and Sosa were taking steroids in the 90s and blowing out 80 home runs a year? It was really like 70 or whatever. And Barry Bonds was the best best baseball has ever been. So, and, and I like that people think that uh, sign stealing is cheating I, I don't know that it is. I'm not a professional baseball player. I'm not a pitcher. I would assume if I knew what pitch was coming, it would be easier. But at the end of the day, it's still a dude throwing a ball 90 plus miles an hour. I got to hit the fucking thing. You know, and then they try to say that homeboy was wired up. That's why he didn't want his shirt. And he's like, bro, I had an unfinished tattoo of my fucking daughter on my chest. Plus, my wife said, don't let them take your fucking shirt off because she didn't like it, whether she's strict or whatever. But this is how the media, like ESPN, tries to make these big stories. It's like clickbait. It's like a YouTuber with clickbait. And then once they realize the real story, they'll make another story about the story that wasn't the real story. Fuck out of here. It's all sensationalizing bullshit. Anyway, the Astros aren't going to get their shit taken away. Nothing happened to anybody on the fucking team. It's all good. People are pissed. Of course they're pissed. Because now that the Dodgers, whoever they lost to can go, oh, that's why we lost. We didn't lose because they're a better team and they won. It's because they cheated. No, no, you lost, bro. You lost. So whatever. I mean, watching these grown men millionaires look like sore losers two years after the fact. Get the fuck out of here. Go to your spring training and go fucking do your thing and get ready for another 180 game season of fucking baseball. Motherfuckers get caught up in that bullshit. I'll tell you what. I am looking forward to... Next Saturday, Tyson Fury and Dante Wilder. Oh. To, fight, to me, it's the fight of the last 10 years. I fuck all the Mayweather fights and all that shit. This heavyweight fight, bro. You, bro, they've been replaying the old fight with Dante Wilder and fucking him knocking out Tyson Fury, but he did The Undertaker and got up. I watched that live. It was one of the greatest fights i ever seen. So this one is going to be fucking good. Like, 
Tyson Fury is a fucking hell of a fighter. I'm rooting for him. But yeah. But Tyson um but Dante Wilder, like people hate on him that his boxing style isn't really like technically good, but if he hits you, you're fucked. Like he just randomly knocks people out out of nowhere, so uh anyway, that's enough of the sports report today. I don't know what the fuck why I kicked off the show hyped about sports, what but NBA star game. Yeah, you know, lately I've just been watching a lot of sports back and forth and uh whatever, but I wanted to get into some gaming news that I've been hearing or reading about. There's the PlayStation 5. So apparently Sony is kind of getting nervous because they are figuring it's going to cost them about 450 just to make the console. Like they're going to take a loss on those on all those consoles, the PS5. And I don't Not know if they make it more expensive, but the, that's going to cause a big problem. I'm sure that those CEOs and shit are sitting in the office going, we told everyone it was going to be what? Four ninety nine, right? Yeah. They try to keep it like around 500. So all of a sudden you think they're going to release a press and go, it's actually five fifty or 600 or 650. People are going to be pissed. And also if Xbox's price is around 500, uh, you they you know if you notice they're always comparable to each other. There's never really a, a console like Xbox and PlayStation that's two hundred plus more. It's not so, um, but from what I hear, I mean this PlayStation like the cooling system I've been reading about because you know my PS4 Pro I love it to death, but you know you get it to stage two where it gets fucking hot, the fans kick on. It does sound like an airplane. I mean that shit is. I mean it's loud. Uh, so to me, I would, I, I like those quiet running. Like I noticed my Xbox one X does run quiet. I hate almost every other thing about it. I hate the dashboard. The overall interface is garbage. It glitches out on me all the time for whatever reason. I'm just not into it. It's clunky. It's just whatever. But the new series X I'm excited about. I love the way it looks. I still haven't obviously seen the real PlayStation five. The one that I hate that looks like the 2000s router or hair dryer. Um, I've seen more of a slimline unit that looked a little funky. I hope that's the real one. I guess we're going to wait to reveal. I don't know when Sony's going to reveal, but... There's more and more evidence that it might be the hair dryer. It better not be the hair dryer. I'm going to fucking be really upset about that. But uh, I saw some stuff about the PS5 controller. Once again, it's really hard to determine if these are fan-made CGI things, or it kind of looks like the DualShock 4 controller, like the new controller for PS4, but it's a little beefier, kind of like uh, how this is, but there's a screen. It looks like there's an LED uh, touchscreen panel here. I love this controller, by the way. This is the, uh, the Nacon Pro Evolution 2. This controller is ridiculous. The quality of this, I mean, I love my premium controller, so... Hopefully, uh, that's something that they'll work on, uh, getting a proper controller out. I think it should be a premium high-end elite controller. That's one thing from Sony that always pissed me off. Xbox at least did the elite. I got the elite, what, series two here. Elite series two is a wonderful controller, which you can also use on PC and shit. To me, that's the best controller. Uh, yeah, it is. I think it is, but I will tell you that that Nacon controller is real close. You know, I, I mean, like I said, I got the scuff. I love the scuff controller. They just made the Vantage 2. It's I. I don't know, man. It's not a I. I think, think this is a really, really nice controller. The quality of it's incredible. So we'll see what happens on that front. Um, I guess I wanted to talk a little about uh, the feedback we got from the vlog, the first vlog. People seem to really like it. I, I, I was kind of cautious about how people would receive it and... Uh, people did hate on you for touching the camera because you were out of focus a lot of times. So, shout out to whoever um, you know you were that made that initial comment. Damn it, I'll get better at it though. Yeah, I know, but this is why I don't like you to touch the camera because you, you like to fuck around and think you're Scorsese and start doing these focus points and shit. But not in the you're you're doing it off time. Like if I'm explaining something, you can't do all that, bro. Damn it, I know it's all right. You'll get better. I'll get better too. I'm not perfect. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. We're just filming. We just filmed a day around the house doing nothing. The next one will probably be... It could be viewers' topics. Well, yeah. I mean, I know people want to see... We're going to do some thrifting stuff at some point. We're going to do some going to comic book stores. We're going to do some conventions. We're probably going to do a, a car show vlog. There's a car show coming up in my community next month. So we're going to do a car show vlog for sure. But we're going to try to make it more consistent. That's the key. I want to be able to put the content out, let the people fuck with it, 
let them decide what they like. So in the comments below, guys, let us know what you like. Let us know what you want to see us do. And uh, I don't have a problem doing it. I mean, I think we, we, we can definitely make some quality shit. I just think we need to navigate and find out what works best. That's all. So um, the vlog, I mean, the vlog was cool. I, I had a good time doing it. I thought it came out good. Of course, I, I'm a perfectionist and there's some things I would nitpick and we can do better. But overall, the vibe was cool and the people liked it. So oh, nice. shout out to you guys. Um, let's see. What else did I want to talk about today? Because I had a couple of things on my mind. Oh, just randomly to get it off my chest. I've been watching. I like to always tell you guys what I watch on YouTube because it's my main. I always say it's my main source of entertainment. I don't watch TV. I watch live sports on TV and that's it. So, you know, YouTube and their fucking algorithms got me caught up in these restoration videos. And I don't mean like restoring a car or a house. I'm talking about random items, anything from a Game Boy to a Harley Davidson Zippo from the 1900s, early 1900s. Like, and so it'll just be a almost, it's almost like a therapeutic video. There's really no audio. You'll just see a guy and you'll just hear the audio from him kind of squirting the thing down with solution and cleaning it. And they do a lot of fast motion time lapse. And then you get the payoff because you see it looking like they found the fucking Zippo at the bottom of the ocean. And at the end of it, it's gold plated and it looks fucking phenomenal. And they do it with all different shit. They did it with a medieval axe. And these motherfuckers get millions of views. But you know what's funny? If you go to the comments, all those restoration videos, for one reason or another, every single comment's like, never watched one of these videos in my life. Suggested video by YouTube. I'm amazed and I love it. Thank you. And I'm like, they did it to me too. Now, I wish they would fucking suggest our video like that. Fucking algorithms. Yeah, algorithms, bro. It's a real thing. Like, people use it. I know some people think that smaller pages or channels use it as an excuse of why they're not successful and sure there's a little bit of that but it's a real thing like you know me i went off forever with instagram the changes in instagram it's stupid you can go back to my page from like 2015 2016 my interactions and shit were triple but i had fucking way less followers so what happened it's the way that they choose to show you certain people's content chronological well that's that's the fix just show as people post and the people that are more active will get rewarded because more people will see it. It's a simple thing, but no Instagram wants to go. I robot on you and say, no, we know what's good for you. Cause we know, for instance, full disclosure, I may or may not have been clicking lately, just occasionally on one of these fine ass fucking fitness models on Instagram. Now my whole suggested feed is all these fucking Instagram models with great asses, which is wonderful, but I don't need all of them. Like, I clicked on one of these chicks. I'm like, wow, she's fine. I go back. I refresh my suggested thing, which is normally vintage, like, clothes, cars, video games, and collectibles. That's normally what my... Now it's just fat asses everywhere. And it's cool, but I like my shit separate a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my boy uh, Big Black used to say, I want my sex separate like church and state. You know, I want my... clicked on one of them. That's all it takes. Oh, my God, man. They don't fuck around. I, I literally clicked on one of them, and now I just got chicks everywhere, which is cool, but dude, I mean, what the fuck? You know? Now, if I was like an NBA player, you could just slide in the DM of all, which they all do. I already, I don't even want to know. If you could know every athlete or rapper or celebrity that randomly hit up these chicks and just PayPal them fucking 10 grand, send a flight, do all this crazy shit, there's a lot of fucking slutting going around out there, God damn it. This is a family show. I didn't, you know what? This is a family show. I'm, I apologize. I apologize. We're going to clean it up next segment. I, I We're going to clean it up. I promise. We're going to come back with item of the day, which is a nice pickup that I got for the low to be continued. All right, motherfuckers, you know what time it is. It's time for item of the day. Today's item. And I'll hold it up briefly because Doyle's going to get some wonderful B-roll. The Gran Turismo Bape Hoodie. It says Bathing Ape over here. It says Gran Turismo, the real driving simulator. And it's even got the back, which is dope. So we'll get some B-roll of that. I just it's wanted official, to... though? Yes. So the cool thing about that is that came out, I want to say, a year and a half, two years ago, maybe, somewhere in that range. And I guess Bape did a release with Gran Turismo, but it was only sold in the New York City Bape store, or I think at one 
Gran Turismo event, I believe. It's an expensive hoodie, you know, Bape and all this shit. It's a $300 retail hoodie. And they only made X amount of them. And I'm not normally the Bape hype beast guy. I used to rock Bape way back in the day, like fucking late 90s, early 2000s. And, you know, I got into the Bapes to shoes. I used to have a few pairs and this and that. But the Gran Turismo, you know, I'm a Gran Turismo whore. That is my game that I've never invested more hours in a video game than Gran Turismo. So to have... A streetwear release that's done really well. See, the thing about that hoodie, it's got the camo with the fucking Bape logos all over it. And it's, it says the real driving simulator. It wasn't overly Bape. It was just enough where it's like, cool. So anyway, I brought this up. Remember last uh, podcast, I was saying the, the bidding on eBay was ending uh, as we were doing the show. And I remember the bid started at 85 bucks. And I said, I'm going to put in one bid and I'm done. I'm not going to, I'm not chasing this thing because I've wanted it forever. And motherfuckers try to sell it for 500, 450, you know, retail is 300 and you never even see it at the retail. And, uh, I let it go. And then we finished the podcast and I got the message. You've won the bid. No snipers, bro. I, I sniped that. I sniped that. And, uh, it's a hundred percent authentic. I verified the fuck out of it. Plus it's such a limited release. Nobody would fuck it. I mean, you would have to... I, why would they even create a fake of that? But they create fakes of everything. I just figured for the price I got it for, it was super worth it, and it was. And, um... I mean, damn, it's just a dope, dope-ass hoodie. Like I said, you told me, why aren't you wearing it on the podcast? I'm like, because I made it item of the day. I love Gran Turismo. I've never seen really anyone else rock that. I've only seen them online. They're on all those hype beast sites, Grailed and all that shit for $500. It's the perfect size. It fits me fucking perfectly. And uh, I'm excited to own it. It's a cool piece of, you know, the last six months or so, I've really stepped my game back up on, like, certain clothing pieces, mostly vintage, uh, which I've, I I went to the thrift the other day, and I picked up some really fire shit that I'm going to be uh, sharing soon. I got Bob Marley shirts, like a Bob Marley, uh, Marley wrap tee. It's crazy. I got uh, a lot of uh, early 90s NFL animated character shirts with like the big heads on them the hand sketched ones single stitch all that good shit that espn jersey i got is ridiculous that thing is dope and uh so i had another good day at the thrift you know i what i normally do with the thrift shit is i'm on and off i let them refresh give it give it a couple days or at least uh you know a few days if not a week and then i kind of circle back and then when you go back and you find good shit you're like dude it's just a constant gold mine if you want to put in the time but that Bob Marley tee I found, man, it was it's a black tee, and they have all the black shit at the Salvation Army, all the colored coordinated shirts. It was second to last one on a rack of about 120 shirts. Like, it took me, like, my arms get tired flipping through these shirts, and I'm going through, and I'm going through, and I'm just getting discouraged. They're all bullshit. They're, and then that, I see Bob Marley smiling up at me, bro. And it was a rude, it was a rude... Rude Boy Zion, I forget the name of the the company, but it's the official shit. It's not just some bullshit. It's like the official rap tee shit. Okay, anyway, it was dope. Um, you sold a couple things already, right? Oh yeah, instantly, instantly. You sold the men of gear figures. Yeah, I don't care. I'm bro. I'm out of the. Well, this is coming from the same asshole that tells me to sell shit, and then when I sell shit, and then you go, oh, why'd you sell it? I don't care that I sold all three of them shits, and that kid gave me a super fair price. Had to, had to. I've been making all kinds of money selling dumb shit that's just laying around that I don't use. I'm on new shit. If I, I'm tired of hoarding shit. I'm tired of having a thousand totes in my garage filled with shit that I don't fucking use. What's the point of figures and totes in a garage? What's the point? If it can't be displayed in the game room and it can't be displayed in my office, it's gone. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm done filling up fucking drawers. It's stupid. Catacombs? It's just stupid, man. Don't fucking laugh. You should have been here as a friend to be like, hey, bro, you should probably slow down. You just fucking encourage me and throw fucking fuel on the fire. Yeah, well, most of it you can flip. Well, now I could flip it. Yeah, and it's cool. I mean, and I have been. Like, I have good shit. Like, people buy my shit all the time. So, shout out to you guys. I, I, I was them at one point. I was the guy that's waiting for people to let shit go. And I used to buy shit on Instagram like crazy. Well, it's not like they're going to lose money either. You know? No, I know that. It, look, to me, what people don't understand about all this is you can put a $20 bill in your bank account in your savings, or I could take that $20 and find a rare figure 
and let that bitch accrue. I bet you I make a lot more money than you make on your dumb interest rate in your savings account. Plus, in the meantime, I have something tangible to enjoy, to look at, and to have. And then my $20, and I'm just saying $20, it could be a $100 figure, whatever. My $20 now turned into $75 in a fucking year and a half. And your $20 in the bank is at $21.22. You made a dollar and 22 cents because you have a 0.8% interest rate on your money. What about if I buy Bitcoin? Yeah, go ahead. It's at a fucking. This isn't 10 years ago, Doyle. What are you going to go ahead and buy Bitcoin? How much is one Bitcoin right now? Five grand? And how much money do you think you're going to make on that? Exactly. You have no idea. It's fake money. Cryptocurrency is bullshit. There's so many companies. How could there be thousands of cryptocurrencies? Who's regulating any of this? And you're going to put your hard earned money into that? Get the fuck out of here, bro. You're crazy. I want real paper money in my fucking hand until the government and the world and all this crazy shit happens where we don't have a physical dollar anymore. Cool. Until then, I'm riding with the dollar. And some people will say, well, yeah, but you'll be ahead of the game if you're already... Okay. I'm willing to bet my hedges that uh, we're good on the, on the physical money for now. Tangible things always will rule. That's why you should have gold, gold and silver and all that shit. You should have that. I have fucking precious metals stashed. I got squirrel stashes all around, bro. And to me, I've always said all of this shit was an investment. I don't really ever plan on selling like my real, real shit. You know, I'm not going to my carnage fucking collector set or shit that I'm super attached to. I have no plans on selling it at all. But shit that I bought because I'm impulsive and then I throw it in a drawer and then every once in a while I rediscover it. That shit is gone. And it's really mostly figures. You notice I didn't mention games at all. It's just action figures. So that's my stance on it. But people collect all different shit. Like at first I'm like, does anyone even give a fuck about these figures? And all of a sudden I'm getting DMs left and right. And somebody threw me an offer that was uh, fucking amazing. And I fucking took it. Shipped them shits out and we're done. God bless Instagram, bro. It's there's, a gr- there's a market, good market for that. Bro, let me tell you something. If you could build yourself up a decent following, and it doesn't have to be a million followers. Bro, if you, you literally, and I, I've noticed this about the um, the vintage clothing dudes that are serious. They're all networked with each other. There's a little bit of, just like in the gaming community, a little bit of, little bit of haters and jealousy and beef and kind of people throw shade at each other for shit. What do you but, mean? Well, just like in the gaming community. There, there is, there's always a silent beef between certain collectors. There always is. Because uh, as a collector, you're competitive, whether you like it or not, because otherwise you wouldn't buy all that shit. At the end of the day, this isn't normal to have all this. It's a complex somewhere. You know, it's not because I, you know, I was abused as a kid and I buy this stuff to shield me. I mean, some people have some serious issues and that's why they do it. I just do it because fuck it. I can do it and I love this shit and it's just a passion of mine. But... People are willing to go above and beyond to buy shit to look like they're the man. Oh, the Holy Grails. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, for instance, great segue. The Well, well, let me finish before I go into that. The vintage clothing community seem to be really tight-knit amongst people that actually do this shit for real and know what they're talking about. And usually they're a slightly older group. When you get the 18 to 21-year-olds that were born when those clothes weren't even out and they're kind of, those are kind of the hype beasts. The young kids that weren't really around for it and they think they know what they're talking about and then they're selling those shirts for five, six hundred dollars and they think they're fucking cool and shit and they get attitudes and they think who they are. That's where you get the beefs from. But mostly they're like anyone that I've encountered and DM'd and talked to in the vintage community clothing, super, super, super nice dudes. And you know what? They understand certain things are worth certain money. I sold um, all my shirts that I sold that were like the better vintage shit. I got all collector price for because I'm a collector. I expect to get collecting. I don't, if I have a $150 shirt, I don't want the dude that's trying to snake me for $40. I want the dude that wants to pay me the 150 because it's a dope shirt and the money is not as important as the item. Now there's less of those people, but if you could find that niche group, you can make serious money. You honestly can, because if you have real quality shit, people will seek you out. And you know what's cool? They'll all tell you, oh, yo, bro, you might want to hit up so-and-so. They're really into Dr. Doom or whatever you have specifically. Uh, And it's worked for me. So shout out to you guys. Now, I wanted to talk about this 
the PlayStation, uh, the Sony PlayStation Nintendo prototype console that's being sold. It's on auction right now, $310,000. So everyone's hitting me up to tell me to buy it. And my simple response is, yeah, sure, I could buy it, but I have no interest in that. And yes, it's a ridiculous amount of money. But here's the thing. My true belief, and I don't know this 100, the guy that's buying that is not like a gamer like me or you. He's not like a real daily gamer that, you know, I feel like it's just some fucking really rich dude that just wants to have the clout of buying something like that and then maybe flip it later on or it's a strict investment or... I I said this in a uh, reply when somebody, I did the ask me a question thing on Instagram. I, you know, someone asked me about it and I said, at the end of the day, I wish whoever bought that was a real gamer like me and you that found it at a garage sale for 20 bucks. That's what I wish. And he kept it forever, played it or kept it on a shelf. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see this go to an auction and sell for a half a million, a million dollars. It's, it's a cool spectacle, but as a collector, I'm just like, come on. And now me personally, I don't give a fuck. It's a prototype. I have no nostalgic ties to it. And it's an absorbent amount of money. It's stupid. So, it's, you know, sealed stadium events, Nintendo championship carts going for 150000 It just doesn't do it for me. It just, just think about all the cool gaming shit you can have for $150,000. You can buy yourself a hell of a collection, a world-class retro gaming collection or you can have a nintendo world championship card yes but something like that i think like nintendo new york city would buy no but it's not no they're private collectors there are people that can afford to spend 100 grand on a collectible and they buy it and they bro some of these people don't have an instagram they don't want it they don't give a fuck necessarily about the attention but i hope i just hope the guy that buys that nintendo playstation uh prototype has a collection like mine or anyone else that like really plays this shit or at least appreciates it and will put it among other pieces in the collection not just some rich dude like we watch i always show you those goddamn videos on youtube of these uh billionaires with their car collection your boy fucking manny is game money with the hermes the fucking hermes yo here oh by the way he has a hermes pagani as well not just the bugatti chiron he also has a Waira, one of one hermes paris thank you tiger woods might buy that Yo, yeah, Tiger, yo, Tiger's not doing good, man. He was supposed to come out hot with the golf and shit. I don't want to get off on a tangent. So, um, anyway, I was thinking about the PlayStation thing because I've been watching the bids go up and stuff like that. And, uh, I said I had 50 for it. Not going above that though. And obviously it went above that instantly. I don't even remember what the starting biz was, but uh, my 50 got eaten up pretty quickly. So you're not a big fan of the Holy Grails? Um... It's not that I'm not a fan. I just, and it's not me hating. I know some people will be like, bro, you're just hating because you're not going to buy it for 400 grand. It's like, nah, it's not really hating. I just. No, but even like stadium events or. Yeah. Dragon Saga. Right, right. Because I didn't grow up playing it. Now, now, if by coincidence. Any restaurant. I didn't grow up playing that. But if by coincidence, I grew up playing Little Samson, like I remember it was like my favorite game and I got it from my cousin and I had this whole story and I would spend the. 1100 or what 1700 it caught whatever it is i don't have a problem i mean bro i have pieces that are chunky in here bro because i have nostalgic connection especially when it comes to anything metal gear solid anything gran turismo and anything um carnage and then there's a couple others but those three and now there isn't unbelievably ten thousand dollar plus items from those three like i'm in the works of trying to get those gran turismo sneakers that were released by Nike that came out for Gran Turismo 4. They come in the aluminum briefcase with all the other stuff. Like, those are important collector pieces um, based on games that I'm, like, super fond of. That's why I have the Metal Gear, like, uh, Foxhound GameCube from Japan. So, those kind of things, they hit my heart. They pull on the heartstrings a little differently than a random fucking obscure, low-production Saturn game for instance I just don't care but you're a gaming collector right but the beauty of collecting is you can collect whatever you want you don't have to be influenced by the hype beast online that try to tell you what's cool based on likes and comments bro that's what I try to preach to everybody I don't care if you only collect fucking Sega 32X games bro I don't care just make sure it's what you want to fucking collect 
Too many people spend their hard-earned money, pay a collector price to buy something they think is rare and it's going to cause a lot of attention on social media because of the world we live in. It's not the right thing to do. And it's a bad financial decision, but you also, who cares? Who cares? Now now you have that item and you got a bunch of likes. What does that mean? Don't, don't get web of fire. It's a horrible game. It's a horrible game. But it's now, chunks. But, but guess what? If you come up on it at a garage sale, at a thrift store, a buddy at work says, yo, I know you're into retro games, bro. I'm tired of having this stack of bullshit in a tote in my closet. Just take it. And it was in there. Okay. But to go on eBay and spend multi-hundreds on a bullshit game like that so you can feel like I got it. Now, if your shit is collecting a complete set of that system, fuck it. Got to do it. If you want a complete licensed NES set, you got to have stadium events in there or you really don't have the complete set. And what a bitch it would be to have, you know, 99.9% of the games, but you're missing that one. And of course, it's it's $7,500 loose in decent condition. So you're like, fuck. But at that point, you're already invested, right? What I've done from the beginning was spread out my money through multiple systems and multiple different things. Like I said, I'd rather take that chunk of money that a dude's spending on a rare $10,000. Then you could have a whole collection for that. You could get all your childhood memories right there. I have some expensive games, but I have some games that are 5 bucks. You know why? Because I played them growing up. Or they're from my childhood. A lot of my shit was... I, I, when I moved here, I just always... I only moved... I moved three, four times my whole life. And the last time I moved was out of state because it was all in New York. And the fourth time was down here. And I made sure I took all my gaming shit. And about nine years ago, roughly, is when we started fucking with the collection. Like like building the room. I've always had most of my shit was in the attic. And I just got that itch again to go hardcore on retro games. Because prior to that, I always played them every once in a while. But then I started playing a couple emulators and it just didn't do it for me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going in the attic today. And I grabbed that first tote, the second tote. And then those were just childhood things. And then I started going, all right, let's see what the market is on these games. And back then it wasn't bad at all. So I started buying up all the shit within, with like, I think this shit's going to go up. And then bro, it blew up. And yes, eventually it will peak. It will peak. And you're just going to have to deal with it. Like, I mean, you, you kind of did the same thing, but you collect a little bit differently than I do. You're mostly, you're into different shit, but I just think you got to go with your passion, man. You can't go with what other people think is cool. You know, I just, that's why I don't like the word hype beast. I don't like what it represents. To me, it represents somebody that's influenced by others to spend their money and to look a certain way and do a certain thing based on others' opinions, bro. Do your own thing, Doyle. Be yourself, motherfucker. All right? Unreal. Diversify your bonds. All right, motherfuckers. Round three. Round three. Doyle, give me a topic. And we get the new Sonic movie. Did you see it? No. Yeah, you never see anything. Once again, you're the movie buff. You never watch fucking movies. You know what? Before I get to Sonic, I just want to let people know that you're the movie buff. But remember, and this is when I first met you, the rule I had. Where I would, because I, me, I'm the king of obscure references to movies, to 80s and 90s TV shows. And I mean, people think I'm nuts. If you meet me for the first time and we're at a gathering, we're having a good time, I might spit out, I might randomly talk about Perfect Strangers from the 80s and I make a reference to Balky or something and someone would be like, what? So I used to do that to you and you used to give me the what? And I used to say, yo, you didn't see, like, remember the time I said to you, uh, what's in the box? And you know what I was talking about. I said, bro, you never saw Seven? Brad Pitt, you never saw Seven? He's like, you're like, no. I'm like, okay. Instantly, I implemented a penalty. What did I do? Put on Seven on Netflix at the time. This is years ago. And put it to the last five minutes of the movie and make you watch it. That's your penalty for not watching a classic movie that already should have been in your fucking... So I would ruin... What are the movies that I ruined for you? That we just jumped to the end of. We did Donnie. Yeah, that was Bra- one of them. Donnie Brasco. Uh, we did yeah. The Shining. The Shining. Yo, how did you not watch The Shining? Like, what were you doing as a child in Peru? You were just at the pyramids. What was going on, bro? Texas Chainsaws. I fuck yeah. Did that instantly. Goodfellas. I put you on to Goodfellas, Doyle. Nah, I know Goodfellas. You really? Yeah. American Psycho, yeah. American Psycho, because I kept fucking saying. 
Uh, what did I used to say to you from American Psycho? What was the line I used to say to you? Show like Patrick Bateman's card. I forget which one. Oh. Well, we got more problems than Sri Lanka. I would just quote the home. I ju- oh, yeah, when I did that, I just want to fit in. Or Paul Allen's card? Yeah, yeah. Now, let's see Paul Allen's card. And he's fucking sweating. Oh, yeah, the watermark. It's got the watermark. Oh, you're going to see Ford first Ferrari? That was good, right? That one I want to see. I do want to see that movie because that really, as a car guy, there was some serious shit going on back then. Ford and Ferrari and fucking Ford beat them with the GT. That's your favorite Ford. The I ori- have to get that movie. I want to see it. I was going to actually buy it on your Voodoo account and charge you, but I decided against it. Because, well, I said, I you had my that. Netflix for fucking 10 years. I canceled Netflix, but you did give me your Voodoo account. So I appreciate that. Um, the other thing is, I don't remember. Do I still have... My Pandora, I, I think it's still premium, but I think there's a weird ad that comes up that's only, it's like visual. It's like a Ford truck, but it doesn't do the audio. I don't know. I don't listen to Pandora. You know why? I'm an idiot. I don't, you know, I'm a YouTube premium guy, right? You get YouTube music or, or Google music with it. It's a whole streaming app. It, dude, you know, it's great. Look, all the streaming apps are great. Spotify's great. Go, they're all great. I don't understand what why one would suck. They just have a bunch of music. We got lo-fi radio. Uh, but that's all I need. Go on YouTube, lo-fi radio, 24 hours a day. It's live broadcasting, dope-ass, vibed-out instrumentals, no commercials, if you have YouTube premium. That's good blog music. Oh, it's perfect. And they can't get you on copyrights either, mother suckers. Because it's kind of customized. They fuck up. They chop the beat. They kind of... That's another thing. Before we get into the Sonic movie, which was the point of what you asked me, welcome. Welcome to the randomness. I've been really thinking about getting back into production, bro. I've been really thinking lately, man. I used to be super into it. I'm thinking about getting my old MPC back, the fucking 404, so I can chop, I can make some lo-fi. Sample, just, I mean, I get myself a good sampler. I could do everything. Um, so I've been doing some research on that. Now, hold well, on. We need to hit up your boy Mike Craze for that. Bro, yeah, shout out Mike Craze, but unfortunately, Mike moved. Uh, when Mike lived right here, we had a whole thing going, man. We used to have dope studio sessions, and his new setup at his crib now is great, but he lives far away. We'll link up, though. You know, it's Mike, bro. We'll eventually link up. Uh, let's get to the Sonic movie. I didn't see it. You didn't see it. People seem to really like it. I mean, it's great. I just personally think from what I've seen, which are just previews and kind of reviews, eh, it's bring your kids. You know, bring your kids. Have a good family night. It's campy. It's fun. It's Sonic. I have no interest, personally, in 2020, at 35 years old, hey Doyle, would you like to go to the movies today? We can go down to the local cinema and watch Sonic. He's got your boy Jim Carrey. Yeah, Jim Carrey, you know, this is controversial. As much as people love Jim Carrey and his new hippie vibe, money isn't everything, understanding the universe, I don't like that. I think he's losing his fucking mind, and I think he's disconnected. I think he's worth a few hundred mil, and he's kind of insane to begin with. He's as woke. Well, I, well I, am, I am super against woke people. I'm super against people that think... Because you know why? The people that are woke are the most weird, dingy, disgusting people if you really can peel back those layers. And that's why they're woke. They're woke to take away from the fact that they're fucking morally fucked up. It's, you know, this whole cancel culture and woke and all that. But Jim Carrey to randomly in the last few years get interviewed at all these award shows and hey Jim new movie coming out yeah yeah you know what uh, life doesn't really matter and uh, you know you're, you're gonna die at some point so make sure that you know that money doesn't matter and uh, everyone's really treating each other wrong in the world like that's like he's like this weird hey bro separate he's not we, dumb and dumber guy I don't need my celebrities to be political activists I just don't need it because other than the fact that you're Jim Carrey and you're funny as shit, and you're a successful actor, that's all. That doesn't automatically qualify you to talk about the world's ills when you're not even involved in it. You live in a $40 million mansion in Malibu, and you're disconnected as fuck from the real struggles of real people. I don't want to hear what the fuck you have to say about it. So that's the shut up and dribble again? Exactly. And uh, yo, and you know what? People, people come- asked them. No, no, no. A lot of times they're not. A lot of time they use their platforms to speak these things because they're influenced by other people in Hollywood. I mean, there's a whole thing going on, bro. All I'm saying is Jim Carrey, Ace Ventura, The Mask, all that. Love it. I don't need your commentary on life, bro. 
Our lives couldn't be more different from Jim Carrey, bro. You know, I would I would believe what you have to say more than Jim Carrey. At least you we live in the same plane of existence. Uh, let me tell you, when people are really wealthy in life, I'm not as I'm not wealthy like motherfuckers think I'm wealthy wealthy. I do okay for myself and I've done okay. But I've been around people that are like legitimately wealthy, like money is not even a real thing. Like you just buy shit, you don't even it's not even a thing. It's just like I want this, do this, that, boom, phone call. They live in a different universe. Jim Carrey's worth uh, 150 million. Cool, 150 million. That's a lot of fucking money, bro. Okay, that's more money than I'll ever have, than you'll ever have, than our families combined, families, 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 and the people that our families know families will ever have. So I'm supposed to take life advice from somebody like that? A lot of these people deep down have a guilt trip. You know, I've gotten successful in my life in certain things. And then you start to feel like you start buying nice shit for yourself or you do shit and then you realize there are people that are like not as fortunate. You know, I bitch and moan about, ah, oh, I got my car washed and then it rained on my car and I'm bitching or I, I, I go to a store to buy something and you guys didn't have my expensive piece of clothing or sneakers. And it's like, dude, there's someone that's like within a 20 mile radius that can't afford food tonight. So you start to feel guilt. Imagine having 200 mil and going, shit, motherfuckers like, I don't know. Should I give all this money to them? I don't even know if I should be really having this much money. Is it really? And then once you get past that, though, you just become like, in my mind, you're just like zombie mode on life. Like you just forget about all that. You live your own life. And then you get interviewed at the Oscars and you start talking crazy. Anyway, bring it back. Sonic movie. Sonic movie is not something I'm interested in. It looks cool. I'm glad they fixed Sonic up. And, um... It seems like a bring your kids, have a family movie night, and that's what I think it's meant for. I don't necessarily, everyone's like, yo, what kind of game movies would you want to see? Or, you know, I'm like, dude, I guess a Metal Gear Solid movie, but even then, I don't really care. I'm not really into that. I don't know. I just have to let it happen organically. If it comes out and it looks great, I'll go see it. Other than that, I don't really know. You have another topic? Yeah, yeah. All right. So we got the uh, Jordan Xbox. Sneakers and consoles. Oh, yeah. I saw that. That's the Unite package, I believe, which had to do with Chicago. So the All-Star game was in Chicago. Um, Unless I'm crazy, those shoes look like the other red joints, the fours that came out before, but now it comes with the 1X that's red. The one thing I didn't notice was the detailing on the controllers and the 1X. Initially, I just thought it was that, that bright, vivid red. It's got the elephant print behind it. Elephant print oil is on the shoes on Jordans. They have this printing on the the Sun of Mars that I oh, sold you yeah. years ago. They have it. It's elephant print. It's really um, a hard design technique and all this shit to replicate and stuff like that. It so splodges. it looks cool. No, but it but it's like metallic and like inlaid in the red. I like the idea and the packaging was cool. I just don't really, I just don't really care. I don't hate the fact that they do a collab like that. Like when I first heard about it, I'm like, dude, if this is a Fortnite thing, I'm out. That's Jordan shit though. No, no, it was nice. I'm, I'm just, I'm not buying it. I don't really care enough. Well, it's an Xbox One X. And also, guys, fucking five, six months from now, there's going to be a new Xbox out. The hype beasts are going to be all over it, though. No, I don't think there's that many of them. Oh, for real? I don't think there's that many consoles to go around. I think it's probably under 50 or 100. So, I mean, even if you wanted it, you probably couldn't get it. So, I don't know. But it was cool. I, you know, I like that whole vibe at the All-Star Weekend. They had a lot of cool shoe releases that they do. And you know what? I like these uh, LeBrons that came out. The Monstars, because he's doing Space Jam. I like the Monstar LeBrons. He came out with an alternate version uh, for the second half last night at the All-Star Game. So he had ones that were kind of like the purple color, like you would think the Monstars. Then they, he has these like light green ones. I put it up on my uh, story. Like, do you guys fuck with these? Yes or no? People are murdering it. Like, 90% no. Because they look kind of funky. I just think they're cool. I'm not usually a loud sneaker guy like that. You won't catch me wearing too many fluorescent green or yellow sneakers. But I thought they looked cool. Most people didn't. But whatever. Um, Got another one? All right. So we got Infinite Sneakers. Oh, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. I want to talk about there's a company that I'm going to work with. I'm not going to go too far into detail. But speaking of sneakers, there's a company named Infinite. And we are working together and they're going to send me some stuff. I'm going to do some, you know, kind of reviews on their merch. They make, it's like for gamers by gamers. And I really like their logo, which is uh, an infinity symbol, but it's in the shape of a gaming controller. 
the kind of way they freaked it. It looks dope. It looks really dope. And they make their shoes, I would say, what I what they look like to me. Low top skater style. Um, kind of, yeah, kind of like a low top skate style. Nice quality uh, sneaker. And they're going to be sending through some. And I, and I think eventually it's going to become a legitimate sponsor of the show. And I'm excited to be working with them. I've had some conversations with them. And, you know, this is kind of our first um, more major venture into the world of, you know, being a brand ambassador and all this. So this is really cool. I've had a lot of companies reach out to me. I'll be honest. I'm a little bit picky about like who I want to work with with stuff. And, you know, some people have said, yo, well, listen, man, your your show is kind of in the infancy. You, you got to kind of take what you can get at first. And I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. The dick pills. Right. And what do I call that? That's the Joe Budden theory. As much as you hate Joe Budden, and I know a lot of you guys do too, the one thing that Joe Budden, you can't hate on him for, he is about the creator. He's a, He is solely about trying to show you the way of like, hey man, don't take the fucking couple hundred dollar ad for dick pills on your podcast because you're diluting your value. And I'm not saying I'm Joe Rogan and we got 60 million people listening to the show, but fuck it. If I have to hold out for a while, we build up a bigger audience, we have better quality content, whatever we do, and then better companies will come along, and then you're not killing yourself. Just a piece of business advice and foresight, and someone like Joe Budden preaches that a lot, and I appreciate that. I don't agree with everything the guy says, but I enjoy his podcast, and you can't deny he's got numbers on his side, and he does a good job, so. What about Red Bull? Or that sponsored, not sponsored. Look, I don't have a Red Bull anymore, Damn. do I? That's actually because uh, you were fucking late today, and I drank my Red Bull before the show, and I wasn't going to have a second one, so I went to water. They kinds of the contract. And you told me, uh, I told you the traffic won't be as bad today because it was President's Day, and then you text me at like 6, you're like, I'm in the peak of rush hour right now. It was bad. Fear and loathing, you were in the belly of the beast. All right, we got one more topic, and that's it. Go ahead. So a lot of people have been hitting me up, and they like when you played the Switch. <laughs> Yo, I forgot I did that on the uh, on the vlog. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Bro, it's not good. I don't like it. It's just not good, man. I just don't like the way it feels in my hand. I don't like the games. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it, man. You know, I'm not going to say it's like one of these third-party absolute garbage, you know, pre-built-in game handheld. Like, I get it, but... That's from Nintendo, bro. Nintendo is like the OG of video games, right? So they should be able to give you some fucking shit. I guess I'm just too far past the Toad and Princess and Mario. Well, the Odyssey was a shit, though. I just, I wasn't feeling it, man. I, I rather of a, um, a remaster remake of Mario 64, like I always say, with the Unreal Engine or whatever the newest shit is, whatever the new kind of quality is. But I rather that. Because then it's like the classic game that I remember, and it's dope. And then I get, okay, cool, it looks amazing. Same thing with Ocarina of Time. I would love to see Ocarina of Time in some incredible 5K, 8K resolution crazy shit. So, because that screen on the Switch is 720p, right? That's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And I understand it's a smaller screen. 1080p or die, dude. It's 2020. I understand it came out in 2016, 17. Once again, PS Vita. Is that not a 1080p screen that came out in 2013, 2014? Never mind that it's OLED. Yeah, how many games did it have, though? But, but, oh, but who cares? We're talking about hardware. We're talking about hardware. And there are enough games to justify buying the Vita. Just like you would say there's enough games to justify a Switch, right? I mean, you bought a Switch mostly. Well, no, you like Pokemon. I was going to say just for um, Breath of the Wild. No. But, but see, but once again... My problem with Breath of the Wild is, is it a horrible game? Absolutely not. I like the story and shit is dope. I watched you play it for, we went on vacation. We stayed inside in a five-star resort. I watched you play uh, that game for like three and a half hours. Story's cool. What did I bitch and complain about? The bullshit artwork. I don't like that. I feel like it was a cop-out based on graphical limitations. They couldn't make it look perfect and shit. So, eh, to make sure the frame rate's not fucked up, we got to do some, uh, you know, cell shaded graphics and stuff like that and then we'll just chalk it up to artistic visionary shit and people will like it yeah make it look perfect or don't make it it's 2020 dog it's time to step it up nintendo get your fucking game right is that it are we shutting the show down 
Yeah, got me on an aggravated like... level shutting the show down. You had to bring up the goddamn switch. Listen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now. The vlogs? Right. I want to hear suggestions from people. What kind of shit, what kind of content you want to see us do for the vlog. And also, I'll end the show on this. We are approaching 500 subscribers. Giveaway. It's on the way. Sega Genesis Mini, PlayStation Mini. I'm going to tell you guys this. There's going to be multiple winners. We're not doing the one winner. I got some cool shit to give away. Oh, uh, Jimmy from Ohio is not the only one. Well, Jimmy from Ohio might win, and then we might get Stan from Cincinnati. Shout out to Stan. Shout out to Cincinnati. Okay? So 500 subscribers. We're going to wait till we hit it, and it might overlap to the next show. So we're going to get to the 500, and then we're going to we're gonna do it. So uh, keep a lookout for that. It's definitely going to be cool, and uh, multiple people are going to be getting some dope shit. Cool? You, anything else you want to say before we shut it down? Well, we got sponsors, right? No, there's no sponsors. Oh, I mean, we do. We, you know, Espionage VR, we work with them. We also work with Chalkline. You know what I'm saying? We got some merch coming in. Oh, Chalkline's sent me a tracking number today. Capone Noriega War Report jacket. Yo, they're such nice people. Shout out to Chalkline. Shout out to my boy Curtis. He's the one who does a lot of their work for the graphic designs. He's an amazing artist. Um, they're so nice to me. They send me all this shit and then they apologize to me. Yo, I'm sorry, man. I didn't get you the yo. We we, we the the warehouse got backed up. I'm like, dude, you guys stop, man. You make me feel bad. Like you guys, there you Chalkline's the best. They're the best people that I work with, uh, in all this gaming shit that I've met through my travels. So and they got sh- fire shit. Oh, I mean, it's unbelievable. So shout out to Chalkline and uh, until next time, peace. <laughs>